again. I promised I was going to come online every Friday and minister to you. I'm going to make sure I do and I'm back here to the glory of God. Thank God for grace. Um, it's been quite a busy day but I bless God that he made this possible for us all to come back together. Thank God for the testimonies I have received over the 
past week or the week we are about to conclude i bless god for the testimonies um god has been faithful there's been a lot of testimonies i've received in the inbox i have my testimony too and i thank god i welcome you all back online this evening god bless you god bless you god bless you tell someone that we are online again and god is set to release his word is said to bless us through his word is said to increase our faith and deepen our faith and walk with him it's going to be an awesome evening in the presence of god um it's going to be a great time with the lord a great time of fellowship god bless you all i may not be able to mention every name um i may not be able to mention your name um let's go with the serious things first and then we'll come back to that later welcome good evening god bless you once more let us pray father we bless your name because you are awesome in this place tonight thank you for every soul thank you for everyone that is set to hear your word today father lord we ask that you set your light upon them we ask oh god that your word will come to them and it will heal their hearts and it will make ways for them that their life will not remain the same that the word that you will share with them today will share will cheer them up will open new doors for them will place them on a new path and will help them with directions in life it shall be well with every one of us all in jesus name thank you lord for having answered thank you for your holy spirit in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen god bless you this evening i'm going to be speaking of god in the book of psalms chapter 50 verse 15 last weekend we spoke about the word of god we spoke about the name of the lord and what the name of god does how powerful that name is and we are still continuing on that part today and i believe that everyone who will hear and who will listen today that it will work wonders in their life in jesus name i'm going to be reading from the book of psalms from the book of psalms chapter 51 verse 15 psalm 51 verse 15 uh the verse is a very short verse of the scripture but i believe it will change life i believe it will mold lives i believe that our eyes of understanding will be opened may your eyes of understanding be opened in jesus name it says and call upon me in the day of trouble i will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me so what happens when you call the name of the Lord? He answers. He shows forth his hand. When we talk about the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is not in the human form. It's not the way you think of your hand. It's not just what your hand does. We are talking about the hand of the Lord. When you mention the name of God, he stretches forth his hand into your situation. He comes in and becomes a part of your plan, of your purpose, of your program. There is nothing any man can do without God. You can't breathe without God. You can't sleep without God. You can't, you can't make it in life without God. You can't do nothing without God. Because with God, everything that was made was made. And without Him, nothing was made. And so I want you to know that you would need the God of your creation. You would need God. Even our national anthem says, O oh God of creation direct our noble cause guide our leaders right so that's the importance of god you need to call upon the name of the lord for as long as you call his name he will answer you calling the name of god is not just calling it in vain whatever you do it does not matter what you have chosen to do whatever you do you will need god to come in upon it whatever you have chosen to do Sometimes we try to do a lot of things and we forget to call our maker. We forget to acknowledge God. We forget to see the importance of God coming into whatever we are doing. A lot of us think we have, we have, we have, we have um, studied enough. A lot of us think that we have worked hard enough. And because of that, it's enough for us. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Your ability as a man cannot be compared to God coming into that situation, cannot be compared to God attending to it by himself. It's just like putting on, it's just like trying to cook without lighting the gas. 
So it's never going to work. God is the fuel you need in the journey of life. So you have to call upon him. The scripture says in the book of Psalm, call upon me in the day of trouble. Not just in the day of trouble. You have to constantly call God in every situation you find yourself. When you wake up in the morning, call upon the name of God. At night, call upon the name of the Lord. At your workplace, call upon the name of the Lord. You are traveling, call upon the name of the Lord. I think the mistake a lot of people do and why there's a lot of, you know, um, why there's a lot of opposition about God, uh, about the calling of the name of the Lord this day and time is because of the way people react to it. Before you can call God, there has to be something you are doing that you want to call God for. You won't just call my line without wanting to speak to me about something important. You are not just going to call my line without having something important to speak to me about. Or you want to greet me. So you are calling God not for fun. If you call my line and you are not speaking, then I'm going to cut off the phone. So if you call God and you are not saying anything, then God is going to cut off the phone. You are either greeting God when you wake up in the morning, you say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, God. Thank you for waking me up today. I'm going out to work. I'm asking you that you walk with me. See God as a part of you. See God as part of everything you are doing. That's why you should call him in the morning, at night, every day. Keep calling the name of the Lord. Call him into your situation. Don't trust in your own ability alone. Don't trust in the things that you have learned. Don't trust in the things that you think you know. The mistake a lot of business people make is that they think that they know it and they can do it. Whatever you do, your marriage, you have to call God. You don't have all the wisdom. You don't have all the knowledge. You don't have all the experience. Call God into it. That hopeless situation. It's time for you to call God. When it becomes really hopeless, when the door is shut against you, it's time to call your helper. He is your helper, your present help in time of need. He says, call me in the day of trouble. He has given you license to call him. So you don't have to think twice. You don't have to be afraid to call God. You don't have to ask before you do. You don't have to talk to anybody. Some people call their pastor first before they call God. Praise the Lord. Some people will call the clinic first before they call God. Before you call that pastor, before you call that prophet, call God yourself. And by the time you are calling them, God is the first aid you have to apply in every situation. And by the time you are calling that pastor, let him know I applied first aid. Let him know I called God first before I called your number. I called God first before I called you, man. Say it to God. Call God to every situation before you call your friend. Before you call anybody, speak to God. Have you spoken to God about the situation? Did they tell you it is over? As the doctor said to you, it's over now. Call God and see what God has to say about that situation. Before you take any step, before you go in any direction, before you make any, before you make any attempt to do anything, call God first and say, God, what do you think about this? What will you say about this? What's your plan? What's your focus about this? What are you saying to me? Call God and he will answer you. Everything I have done in life, God has always been the end and the beginning of it all. He is the finisher of our faith. Whatever I am going to do, I call God. God, what will you have me do? God, have you seen the situation? Tell it to God. Speak to God about it. When you call his name, even if you are calling him to just praise him, he will do something. Always make it, make an effort to call God. Calling God is speaking to God. Calling God is communicating. Calling God is relating to God. Call God, he will answer you. There is no break in transmission. There's no issues with network when you are speaking to God. When it has to do with God, let it be a personal thing between you and him. Let it be a principle for you. It's a principle that has guided me over the years. I've learned to call him early in life. I've learned to trust him more than my parents. I've learned to trust him more than my friends. I've learned to trust God more than my pastor. What is God saying? Sometimes your pastor's faith is not up to your faith in God. Because you know God, 
Knowing God is, 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 is personal. It's something that you should be able to talk about. It's something that you should have an experience. Have an experience with God. When you call, when you call God into a situation, you would know yourself that I, when I called God, this was what happened. There has to be something. Something must happen when you mention God. God is not any other God. He's not the kind of God you are used to. He's not all the other gods. God is not your uncle. God is more than a father. God is a friend that will not fail. God is deeper than everything that you have, everyone you have ever encountered in your life. Learn how to call God. And before you can call him, you must know him. And it will more long, long way. If you don't know God, you can't call his name. You can't even know what he is or what he is able to do. I know God is the reason why I can tell you he can do this and he can do that. Apply it in every area of your life. Stop being too proud to call upon your maker. Will a child go to school without the knowledge of his parents? Why will you do anything? Why will you want to consider doing anything? Anything at all without calling God first? And say, God, what do you think about this? And he will answer you. He already said it before time. That I will answer you. Praise the Lord. He will answer you. You've said it before. He, he has said it before in his word. He said, I will answer you when you call me in the day of trouble. If you know God, you will trust God. If you have tried him before, you will know that he answers. The God who answers by fire. The God that you can trust. That even when he's not talking, you call him into a situation, he is quiet, you know things are happening. You know miracles will happen. That's why I'm talking about calling God. That's why I'm talking about. And whoever calls God is seeking him. Seek your God diligently and it will answer you. If you don't call God when things are working, you cannot call him when it's not working. When things are working, call God and say, God, I thank you. God, I worship you and I see you. I know it's not my strength. I know it's not my power. Some people will go ahead and speak excellently and tell you how they were able to do it and tell you they did it by their own hands. Some people will tell you how intelligent they are. They will not tell you how many times they had to seek and call God in their closet. Nothing has ever happened to any man without God. I tell you, everyone knows that there is a God somewhere who lives in heaven and rules and reigns in the affairs of men. So don't you let anyone deceive you about forgetting God and say, let us just run this world by our own strength. Man has never been more intelligent than God. There's never been a time, as civilized as the world is today, there's still a lot of challenges that we face. There's a lot of things that we still do not understand. The world itself is a mystery. Life itself is a mystery. The existence of God is mysterious. Your existence is a mystery. Why will you consider doing anything without thinking about God? Why will you ever want to do anything without focusing on God. Anything at all. A lot of us wait until we want to get married. A lot of us wait until we want to start a job. We want to know where to live. But you have to learn, you have to learn calling God every time. Every time. Call him. God is never tired of us. You call him, he will answer you. Somebody comes to see you, don't respond. Someone is saying something. Don't respond before you ask God. And you have to develop it. It's not going to happen overnight. If we are not friends before you are meeting me for the first time, it's going to be different. We'll have to relate to the point that you are able to call me when you want to drink water. It's not the first time you meet a person that you start talking to them as if you've known yourself for a very, very long time. You have to develop a friendship you have to develop a relationship. It helps your spiritual sensitivity. When you start seeking and calling God and interacting with God, your interaction with men will reduce. And your sensitivity to the things of the Spirit will increase. 
Anytime and every time you call God, he answers you. So you have to focus on calling him and seeking him and seeking him and getting to know him, relating with him so that he can improve and increase your sensitivity. The mistake a lot of us are making is that we reduce or we have, um, or we have, we have reduced calling God to going to church. We have reduced calling God to going to the mosque. We have reduced calling God to a festival. Calling God is beyond that. You have to know God. I could tell you this is the shape and the form of God, and I could be lying to you. But your experience, what do you know about God? Your experience, Paul the Apostle to say that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. He had been seeking God, he had been calling God to a point that he wanted to go deeper. So if you have not sought God to that level, somebody not saying correct, the correct thing, somebody saying the wrong thing will easily sway you. Anything they say, you will believe it. If they tell you to drink water, you will drink it. If they tell you to drink oil, you will drink it. If they tell you to eat sand, you will eat it. If they tell you to eat grass, you will eat it. It begins from there because you don't know God. So if you know God and you have a relationship with God, you will know how to seek him in your own way and in the manner that God will appreciate. God won't put you through slavery because you want to seek him. But if you don't know God, you will go to that man who will lie to you because of the things that he will get from you. You will go to that woman that will lie to you because of what he's going to get from you because you don't know God. And whatever anybody says to you, you are going to just swallow it. Who climb? You will start eating grass. You will do anything they ask you to do. You will kneel on stone and walk upon it like you are in school and you have gotten late to school and you are going through punishment. Because you don't know God. The problem we have is not that God is not existing. The problem we have is not the absence of God in the affairs of men. The problem we have is the absence of our own mind in the affairs of God. Put your mind on God. Seek God. And see if things will not change and turn around for you. See if you will not come out of slavery. It's so easy for humans to enslave any other person. It's so easy for anybody to rise up one day and say, I have found God and this is what God looks like. What I'm talking about today is you knowing God. What I'm talking about today is you having a personal encounter with God. Is you wanting to seek God. Paul the Apostle sought God to a level that he got to a point that Paul the Apostle himself decided to seek God on his own. When he met God on his way to Damascus, he was sent to the, to the house of a spiritual leader so that he can learn about God. But he got to a point, he said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to have an experience of God. I don't want to be told that this is what God looks like. I don't want to be told that God lives in a book. I don't want to be told that God lives in the oil. I don't want to be told that God lives in, in, in the garment. I don't want to be told that God lives in my gold. I don't want to be told that he lives in my property. I don't want to be told that God needs my slippers. When I haven't met him, when I don't know what he wants, I don't know what food to feed him, I don't know if he regards my praises. I don't know how he would love me to worship him yet. Don't be told. God is universal. God is everywhere. On the, in the world, in the sea, in the firmament. God is on that flight you are on. Just talk to him. And say, God, that I might know you. Call upon the name of the Lord. And I've said it earlier, not just in the day of trouble. Call upon him when you are happy. Call upon him when you are sad. Call upon him when you are hungry. Call upon him when you are fed. Call upon him when you are broke. Call upon mm. him when your bank account is filled up. Don't limit God to your problems alone. I don't think I want to be your friend if you always call me to ask me for money. I don't think I will always I will be your friend if you always call me to ask for clothes. I don't think I want to be your friend if you always call me when you have problems. I want to be your friend when you are happy. 
I want to be your friend when God has answered your prayer. Some people will be your friends only and only when things are working. Praise the Lord. And when they have issues, they will not call you. The Bible says that a friend loveth at all times. A brother in time of adversity. That's just the way God works himself. God wants you to call him when it's working. He wants you to call him when it's not working. God wants you to call him if you've lost your relationship with God. You've lost the encounter you had. You, you are no longer talking to God the way you used to anymore. You feel you have sinned against God. Talk to God. God is like any other friend. If we are friends and you offend me, I want you to call me and tell me you have realized your sin, you have realized what you have done, and you are sorry, and if I'm a good friend, I'm going to take you back. And God is better than me. I am human. And I may not be as forgiving as God will be, but God will always forgive you. God will forgive, you will forget. God will forgive, you will cleanse. God will forgive, you will remove. God will forgive, you will lift up. God will forgive, you will bring you back to your original place. God will forgive, you will roll into you, you will roll into him. God will forgive, you will, he will cry with you. God will forgive, you will laugh with you. Your earthly friend may forgive, but may not forget. I may forgive, I may not forget. I may forgive, I may not bring you into my house anymore. I may forgive, I may not bring you into my space anymore. I'm talking about realizing who God is and calling him. Your relationship with God is very, very important. The world is, every day the world is getting more terrible. Things are changing. Human beings are becoming more difficult. And God is becoming simpler and simpler and easy and easy every day. Now you can talk about God on the internet. A while ago it was not like that. So God is bringing himself closer to us. But we are running farther away from him. His ears are not too heavy that he cannot hear us. Neither are his hands too short that he cannot save us. But because within us sometimes it could be that we feel like we are not worthy. God already, he already broke that, 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 that feeling. He already broke that barrier by bringing Jesus Christ as an emancipator so that you no longer feel unworthy. Every time you feel unworthy, plead the blood of Jesus and let him know how sorry you are. God doesn't even see anyone as unworthy as long as you see him as worthy. Anyone who counts God as worthy would never be unworthy before God. I was once a poor lost sinner. And God meant nothing to me. He felt like he wasn't worthy to be a part of my life, to be a part of my being. But when I found him and realized who God is and that he will answer me and that he will be with me and that he will guide me, I started my walk with the Lord. And at a very early stage in my life, I began to walk with him. I began to trust him. And I want to tell you something today that I trusted God for something so little. So small because my brain was actually small at that age. I was nine. So I'm telling you that no matter what your stage, your age, no matter your condition, no matter your situation, there is no situation that is too small to call God into. I was so young. I was nine. I was intelligent. I was brilliant. I was expecting to do well in school. And I fell ill. Resumed back to school, and the exam was closed. I didn't do well. The school said I was too young. And they were not just going to, they said they were not going to promote me, and they actually want me to go to a school that is near from that school that I was not going to cope. I called God. Because I was actually too young to understand that my inability to do well in that exam wasn't because I was not intelligent or I did not read my books, but because I was healed. I was so afraid. And I couldn't speak to my parents. I couldn't speak to anyone. And I called God. That very year, the Lord turned it around for me. As young as I was, the next exam I sat for, I cleared all papers. Even the ones that I felt I was a total failure in. 
all papers. And from there, I did not repeat that class. By human standard, I should have. But the Lord promoted me all by himself, miraculously. Why? Because I called him. So there is no situation too simple, too soft, or too big for you to call God and say, God, attend to my case. Human beings are very funny. Some people, the next person they call every time there's an issue is another human being like them. If you call God, he always has the perfect counsel to give. He always has the, past, the perfect word to tell you. If you need a hug, he's going to give you a hug. Some people are just going through a breakup. They've just gone through a breakup. They've just gone through, you know, a heartbreak or anything. And they get into another heartbreak because they didn't call God. Because they called a friend. <laughs> so they are going to get into another problem. Another heartbreak. A friend that is not actually a friend is going to come into their life and damage it the more. But if you call God and you say, God, my heart has just been broken by somebody you created. I need a way out of this. It's going to heal your heart. It's going to mend your heart. It's going to give you a warm hug. It's going to keep you warm. It's going to make you happy. And it's going to bring somebody your way. That will make you forget every, everything that you have ever gone through. Then I'll start calling God again, again and again. Have a relationship with God. Don't let somebody, don't let somebody tell you how sweet it is. The hand of the Lord upon you will be so obvious to human beings, to everybody, even to animals. They will know that the hand of the Lord is upon this person. Because you call God, then you will not be afraid of anything in life. Because tell me that person that is greater than God. Who is greater than Jehovah Lord Divine? Tell me that person. All the people you respect and you fear in your entire life. Tell me that one person that is as great, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience as God. Nobody. I am a fearless woman because I fear God. A person who fears God fears no demon, fears nobody, fears no spirit. A person who fears God and references God will be referenced and will be feared instead. I can go through life orders. I can face life because I have God. In fact, I can face the future. I'm not afraid of what tomorrow has for me because I have God. I used to sing a song a lot. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. But let me tell you today, not just because he lives, because he lives and I call him. Because he lives and I seek him. Because he lives and I relate with him. Because he lives and I dine and I wine with him. In the world that we are in today, when we see somebody that is doing so, you know, that is so fearless, or is doing so well, some people will say, oh, Tibet should jail. About it that will be About it that by Praise the Lord. But let me tell you, a man who does not fear the world is a man who has feared God enough. Is a man who has referenced God. I'm a joint ear of the Father. I'm a child of the kingdom. So there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing in this world or in the world beyond that will scare me. Because I know that I've been calling God that if I don't call him at a particular time, he will miss my call and say, ah, ah she hasn't called me. What exactly is happening? And he would not care. He would take anything out of the way. Whatever it is that is stopping me from calling him, God will push it out of the way. That's God. If you've been doing something for God, it's just like human beings. You've been, you've, been, you've been calling a friend often, and you don't call that friend at a particular time. Your friend is going to call you because your friend misses you. And so if you are the one who calls God often, you will graduate to a level that God will start calling you. 
I called God to a point that he started to call me. And so when I am too busy to call him, he doesn't want to know if I'm in the midst of people. He is going to call me. When I am not saying anything to God, he's going to say something to me. Because God is used to me, I am used to God. You need to get used to God to a point and to a level that you do not even need to ask God. Because you have, you have been so used to God, He's so used to you, and even without asking Him, you are just calling Him. You would imagine, God already knows your wants, He knows your needs. If you don't know how to start by just saying God, start by just worshipping God, some people got to know God by just saying, is there God? Tell God to open the eyes of your heart that you want to see him. That you want to see him highly lifted up, shining in the light of his glory. Tell him to open your inner eyes and your inner understanding. Speak to God and he will answer you. Say, God, I want you to open my eyes so that I may see you, so that I may see the light of the gospel. The blindness and the darkness in the world today is because people, we don't have a number of people, we don't have the number of people, we don't have enough people who have seen the light of the gospel. If all of us see God, we will act differently. We will talk differently. We will walk differently. We will take life is more easier. We would relate with human beings better because we have seen God and we know that the things we take too personally, God is not taking them too personally. And we will no longer, we will no longer be deceived by a prophet who professes to have seen God, but I have, but I have not seen his shadow at all. As only as Moses was, he could only see the shadow of God. As holy and as righteous as Moses was, he could only see his shadow. But you will get somebody lying to you who is drinking good milk in the comfort of his room or a room and we come out with a lot of and then I don't know what to call it and dramatize in front of you appearing as an angel of light but full of lies and tell you this is what god looks like yo dj suti law ashore felele there is more drama than experience these days i need you to have an original encounter with god I need you to have an original encounter. It took me a lot to get back on this program. I've been doing this for years. But because of my recent engagements, I had to, you know, I, I had to take a break. But I'm back to the glory of God because people need to actually see the original truth about the gospel. That God is more than an act. That the hearts of the apostles were the... That, that it was original, it was pure, it was evident. This sign shall surely follow them. It is not just the opening of sight or the raising of the dead. The sign shall follow them. They will be untouchable. The sign shall follow them. They will be righteous. The sign shall follow them. They will be favored. Those will open to them. Men will love them. The glory of God will be seen in their life. They will be beautiful with less makeup. They will be beautiful. The glory of God will show, even with a lot of makeup. Those are the signs. Most of the time when men talk about signs these days, they are talking about the signs, they are talking about paparazzi, they are talking about the signs of somebody jumping up and down. That's not signs. It's just one of those things. The signs that God is talking about, the signs that the scripture is talking about, is that you will be a different person. Is that you will be different from others. Is that when you walk in a place, they will know that God walked through that place with you. 
is that when you pass through a place, you will make impact. Is that you will build a holy nation. Is that after you speak, men will fear God. Is that you will bring men to their knees, crying, Abba Father, seeking God with a new heart. On this platform, it's not about drama. It's about who God truly is. The naked truth about God. And that men will seek him while he is near. And that men will see the original truth about God. Now, I'm not saying that God will not walk with the hoy. I am not saying that God will not walk with the book. I'm not saying that God will not walk with the bell. If God will walk with the donkey, if God will walk with the horse, he will walk with anything. He will walk in the wood. But let's not make all these things about God. God is not limited to our mentality. God is not limited to our imagination. God is beyond that. God is ancient. He is awesome. He is new every day. God is alive. God is holy. He is pure. He is true. God is light. The experience of God is that when you go to church, when you go to his presence and you hear the word of God, your spirit is lifted. Not because the problem is gone, but because the problem has no impact anymore. Because the weight has been lifted. It says, come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden." It says, I will give you rest. He's not saying that as soon as you come into his presence, the problem will immediately disappear. Yes, it will disappear sometimes. But sometimes the problem is there, but the problem will be neglected. Sometimes the problem will be there, but the impact would have been lost. It only means that sometimes you will still test HIV positive, but you'll be more healthy than someone that is negative to it. It only means that your blood count is still low, but you are more healthy with someone who has a correct blood count. It only means that they can still see the cancer, but it has no impact in your life anymore. That's what we are talking about. God is too serious to be mocked. God is able to lift your heart and your spirit. It doesn't mean he's going to just lift you out of the situation. Immediately, you just see yourself, you find yourself in another place. When some people start praying about prosperity, their imagination is suddenly an award of contract from federal capital territory. Sudden boom. You are not Yahoo Plus. God is not God to Yahoo. God is real. Yes, miracle does happen. I'm a living testimony. I've ministered to people. They've been saved. They've been healed. They've been cured of diverse of diseases. The lame has walked. The blind has seen. The dead has, you know, so many things like that. But what I'm talking about and what I'll be speaking to you about is nothing but the open truth. That God will do all of these things, but we do not have to make it about God. That we do not have to deceive people. The reason why people can't stay long in church and in the presence of God without running elder scatter is because we have lied to them about how these things work. Pastor, you are riding a limo today. You did not start riding a limo. You started off walking on your barefoot to every crusade, to every field. It didn't start like that. Your growth was not sudden. Yes, I know our God is a God of suddenly, but say the truth to people and let them know that in their walk with God, they will see God move very swiftly and they will see God move very slowly. And even when he is slow, he is still God. Allah will come on me. Even when he is not reacting the way you want him to, he is still God. Even when things are not going the way you expect it to go, he is still God. That's the sovereignty of God. He's not going to do it the way you want, but the way it feels that is perfect for you. That is going to work for you. 
Let's start saying the truth to people. Let's start saying the truth. And you'll be ready to listen to the truth. Because another problem there is, is that we don't want to hear the truth. But if you will sit there and listen to your doctor tell you you will die in one year or in 60 days, why won't you listen to God telling you? Let God say the truth to you. A man who will call God who will seek him, who will relate with God is a man who is ready to hear the absolute truth. That is the will of God sometimes is not your will, it's not your way, it's not what you want. As friends, we say to ourselves, what are friends for? Can't I speak the truth to you? In fact, there's a Yoruba adit that says when two brothers come out of the house smiling, they haven't said the truth. So you don't have to go to the presence of God and come back home smiling every day. Sometimes it's going to hit you very personally in a way that you don't expect. So sometimes it will hit you very hard. Let's stop, let's stop petting people around and stop petting yourself. If God needs to pet you, we'll pet you. If he needs to give you a nudging, he will give you a nudging. If he needs to eat you, we eat you. But he knows you will not die. He nailed his only begotten son to the cross. He hasn't nailed you to the cross. Stop going to church and expecting pastor to praise you for being holy. Stop going to church and expecting pastor to say lies to you. Go to church with the heart that is prepared to hear the word of the Lord. That is, when you pray and it doesn't happen immediately, you are not going to stop calling God. And say, I called him. Maybe I've been calling God. And he still hasn't answered. Don't leave church because you have prayed and the testimony hasn't happened yet. You keep going to church and expecting that God must be working things in your favor. God must be planning for you. God must be, you know, God must be cutting down every obstacle. God must be clearing the path for you. Brothers and sisters, I want us to trust God. I want us to have a relationship. I'm about fellowship on this platform. I started this program because God said to me, I want you and everybody to clamor for a change in every aspect. I want people to grow. I want you to speak the word to them. I want every broken heart to be healed. I want people to grow in the Lord. Grow in God. And you will not be insulted. You will not be disgraced. You will not be kneeling down to a wood. You will rise. You will be confident. You will be bold. True revival is long gone in our midst. Why will you say you are doing a revival? You bring together a revival. Revival is reviving. Revival is about the, it's, it's about the Holy Spirit. Revival is about bringing people to be more passionate about God. Don't go to revival with the mind that you want to go and bow go and hear sorrow. A revival is a revival. An evangelism crusade is an evangelism crusade. A deliverance program is a deliverance program. Know the difference between all of these things. Why won't people just go to church just to have a relationship with God, not a relationship with their pastor? Why would people not go to church, not just so that they can show off their good clothes and their nice shoes and their, and their brand new car? Why don't you go to church just to have a relationship with God? Just to know how sweet fellowship can be. The Bible says how sweet is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. The unity is not for brethren to get together so that they don't fight. We are not expected to fight in church anyways. The unity is talking about is the unity of the spirit. The unity of the spirit and of the soul. That we will all go to church with what mindset. That we want to go and worship God. That we want to go and exalt his holy name. That we want to go and dance in his presence full of joy. And come back home filled with the Holy Ghost and power. That's all. That's all there is to know. As long as you are 
filled with the Holy Ghost and power, miracles will automatically happen in your life. The first thing you need to tell people is about God and the power of His resurrection. If you encounter the power of God's resurrection, what is that demon doing dancing in your life? What will the sickness be waiting for? What will the disease be waiting for? It's not going to wait. Because by the reason of the anointing, yokes are broken. It's not by the reason of the hoying. It's not by the reason of the cross. By the reason of the anointing, every yoke will be broken. You've got to be anointed. Not just your pastor. He says you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that's the anointing we are talking about. If you call God, it's going to descend heavily upon you. If you call him, whatever you call God to, if you put yeast in a flower, it's going to rise. Because you have put yeast, it causes a reaction. So when you put God in my life, I am going to be lifted up. Lifted than my enemies, lifted than my problems, lifted than my limitations. I'm going to be lifted above sin and sorrow into the presence of the Lord. And the problems are going to start running away from me. I don't chase problems, I chase God. And God chases problems. Be a God's chaser today. When you chase God, He chases your problems. They don't wait for you. I don't spend my time war fearing and shouting and praying every day and doing the problem people have is that's what that's exactly what they are waiting for you to do every time you come on the pulpit every time you come online you get to see people praying you want to one man yeah to see what contract you that is looking for this you that he better cried in your ears the forest is not far from us so best can cry in your ears it's normal Praise the Lord. That's what people are always clamoring for. That's what people are always shouting for. That's what people are looking for, actually. You'll be hearing a lot of devilish evil prophecies. When you start looking for problem, problem will look for you. If you don't look for God, you are looking for how to solve your problem. More problems will gather around. That's why you will hear terrible prophecies of how your family friend is doing you, is attacking you, is stopping your glory. We don't allow you to move forward. How you will have accidents. How you have. But when you start chasing God, and the problems will not wait for you. When you start chasing God, people, men and brethren, everyone around you, they will see the difference in your life. My prayer for you, for somebody who is hearing this word today, is that your life will turn around. Is that from tonight? When you make a decision, I want you to grow. Every time you hear this word, the more growth you have, the more encouragement and the more oil I have. And I will dedicate more time so that you grow every day. So that the insult to the name of the Lord can stop. So that the making, making God, making merchandise of God's superior anointing and power can stop. So that you can stop enriching the pockets of the evil ones. So that you can truly serve God with all your heart, with all your soul. Why are missionaries suffering? Why is it that only a part of the, a part of the office of the five folds of the ministry is the only one enjoying grace and money? If you are not a prophet or a prophetess, you will not have money. You are not a bishop or a pastor, you will be poor. Why? But the ones who are truly, who are true revivalists, missionaries, talking about God, drawing men to God, they will be suffering. They will have clothes to wear. 
I remember growing up, my parents would bring out used clothes, their used clothes, our used clothes. And some people would come, they would, you know, bring uh, bowls and baths and they would give us buckets and take those clothes. And then I would ask my parents, what is this? And they said they are taking it to missionaries because they don't have clothes to wear. But let the missionary come as a prophet and tell you today, I see, I see seven stars and ten days and that. And then you start dropping money, dropping money, dropping money, and all sorts. I need you to grow up to a point that when you give God your money, you give him the right way. I want you to know God to a point that you understand that God is not waiting for your money to bless you. I need you to know God to a point that poor people will get to heaven. Poor people, they will enter the kingdom of God faster than the rich ones. Faster. Understand God to a point that you know that not until you go and give an offering, that's when God will answer your prayer. Understand God to a point that it's not until you dress in a certain way before God answers you. If I'm not tying this cup, God will answer every prayer I pray today tomorrow in the bedroom understand god to a level that it's not until you all gather in a place and you make a section of your house sacred i've had some people talk about building an altar for the lord is our god not omnipotent are you saying our God is not omnipresent? Are you saying that our God is not omniscience? That our God is not in your womb? That our God is not everywhere? That our God will not hear you when you are cooking in the kitchen? Is that what you are talking about? Understand God to a level. Relate with him to a level and don't stop seeking God because you have committed a sin. You are human and you are not going to be perfect. Even in your work with God. As friends, we are not perfect. Sometimes we cheat our friends. Relate with God like that. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul and it will do you good. Today, the Lord will answer every of your prayers. You will be the one doing it. We will pray together. We will pray. You will pray. I will pray. The Lord will answer me. The Lord will answer you. I'm not going to deceive you. If God hasn't spoken to me concerning you, I will not lie to you. If there is no prophecy, I will not fake it. I will tell you the truth. I've always told the truth. If there is, I will say, thus said the Lord. If God hasn't said anything, I'm not going to say, thus said the Lord. But we are going to pray and the Lord is going to answer us. The only thing that the Lord has assured me is that he will answer every prayer. And I'm going to close with this word again tonight. In the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 15, that says, And call upon me in the day of trouble i will deliver thee i will deliver thee i want you to look at that place he laid an emphasis and then he says and thou shalt glorify me we will glorify the lord concerning that situation you will glorify the lord concerning every situation that concerns you that matters to you you will glorify the lord i will glorify the lord we will exalt his name we will give him the glory we will laugh we will enjoy god we will relate with god it will be a fellowship it will be a loving one our eyes will see his glory it will beautify us it will grow us up it will lift us up it will lift everybody he will answer every prayer there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that is the spirit of the Lord. The sweet Holy Spirit. The sweet heavenly dove. The God that is so real that transcends human understanding or religion. The God that is so loving. Our Father. An almighty Father. All powerful. All knowing. All seeing. Agbati, Benia, Julia, Oru, 
the oldest and the most ancient God. Today we are going to know more of him and we are going to see him. And by the time we are coming back again, we will come back with testimony. Your life will change for good. You will not be the same person that you are. You have had the word today. I have had the word today. I am blessed by his word. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a way of God connecting to you. You are going to see him. Tonight you will experience God. God is so sweet. When you see people who are happy without money, without clothes, it is God in their life. It is God in their, in, in their ministry. The only thing that will make a pastor with only three congregations happy is God in his life. The only thing that will make a bishop with several millions of congregations sad is the devil in the bishop's life. The Holy Spirit will make you happy. And I'm going to sing this song. We will smile again, amen. We will smile again. Father, make us smile again. Holy Ghost, make us smile again. Amen. We will smile again. Amen. We will smile again. Father, make us smile again. Holy Ghost, make us smile again. Amen. I'm going to pray with all of you. And come Friday, we are going to meet again. And there's going to be a lot of testimonies. Thank you for coming online to receive. God bless you. Father, we bless your name for this evening. Thank you because you said to me it will get better every weekend. Thank you for this word. Thank you for what you have said to these people today. Thank you for changing people's mind concerning you and their perspective. Thank you because they see a different you. They see you in a different light. And they are going to chase after you. For as many who will chase after you, will chase after their problems. You will chase contracts for them. You will chase men for them. You will open doors for them. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done this evening. Father, Lord, I pray over these ones that they will see you more clearly. They will love you more dearly. They will follow you more closely in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word of truth. Thank you, Lord. We we'll bless your holy name. You will take away every attack upon their lives. You will take away every persecution. Father, we pray that we have testimonies that today as they have made a decision to walk right by you, that every of their requests you will answer in their private place of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for having answered. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming online today. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for answering every time I call, even at odd times. God bless you all. You know, I love you, and I'm going to come back again on Friday, come what may, wherever I am. I'm going to connect to you, and it's only going to get better. Tell somebody, clamor for changes back online soon. Night of Prophecy will be back online. Thank you for your patience over the past few months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you so much. You all have been very, very patient. <laughs> you all have been very supportive. Thank you for not losing hope and faith. Thank you for waiting. There's so much love. God bless you all, loving, wonderful online community. I love that you love me to smile. I love your smile. God bless you. I'll just mention a few names before I close for tonight. God bless um, Olua Kemi Makinde. God bless, um, I'm seeing uh, Falola Uraola. <laughs> I'm seeing Abin Precious Oliti. I'm seeing Osai Blessing. Ladipo Banke. <laughs> Thank you for the woman who helped me to set up this evening. Thank you, Mommy Gio, Mama Didi. <laughs> She's just jumping up and down and being funny in, <laughs> funny in front of the camera. <laughs> Olo Rijumoke. Uh, God bless you. Mutolani Komolafe. God bless you. 
Uh, give me so loud that I'm all loud. God bless you. I see Princess Cook. God bless you. <laughs> Um, Kofo, Iriolua, God bless you. If I'm not calling you Mr. or Mrs. or Mommy or Daddy, I want you to know that I'm sorry about that. But I, I can't be too sure what I should call you by uh, because we've not met in person. But I know God knows your number. God knows you. God knows your name. Ah, God bless you. Eke Joy, Yalode. Wonderful. Good to see you online. And you, my mommy. God bless you. God bless you, Yalo. It's so good to see Yalo Day online. God bless you. This is awesome. This is awesome. Princess Abiwa Pele. God bless you. I see one mommy here. Uh, mommy Adegon online in car. God bless you. God bless you. They've been there from way back. Way back. They've been so patient. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All the EN Erats family, thank you for waiting on me. Thank you for praying to God. Thank you for hoping that I'll be back online to speak to you. God bless you. I know that you love the ministry of God in my life. And that's why you've always hoped that I'll be back. God bless you. Mommy, now me. God bless you. <laughs> God bless Queen Mother for her support. She's so funny. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. For Lasha Day, for Larami. God bless you. God bless you. San Victor or Sase, I see you. <laughs> God bless you. I see you. I see you. Oni Okoyemi Oluwani Femi. God bless you. I'm praying for you. I see your prayer request. You can send that to the inbox. We'll attend to it. God bless you, Balugu and Bionu Grace. God bless you. God bless you. Shout out to all of you. I would not be able to mention all the names, but I know that, just know that you are loved. Oluwa Toyi, um, Sarat, Sonny, Pokola. God bless you. Since she loves my face. I love your face too. <laughs> Watching from UK Fit, Igaro, God bless you. Um, Osai Blessing, thank you for that prayer. Uh, Kunle, uh, ah, looks like Oluaye, eh, eh, Kafata, eh, Leo, Tony Victoria, God bless you, thank you for the prayer, Sophia Adeye, ah, sounds like my sister's name, God bless you, uh, Ashiwaju Fumilayo, oh, <laughs> I know that, I know that, Ashiwaju, <laughs> God bless you. I won't find so Lori. God bless you. William, William. God bless you. Uh, is that Prince William? God bless you. <laughs> God bless all of you. Uh, uh, this is um, Osh. O S H Mush. Wow. God bless you. Margaret Olufunke Oshoba. God bless you. Omowu Milare. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm not sure we can mention all the names tonight because we can just stay here just mentioning names. God bless you. I have to run along. Um, Moreni Kerisi Kat. God bless you. I love you. You know I love all of you. There's a lot of you coming. Um, I hope it's not just some people popping in just to come for, you know, the, <laughs> the felicitation. If you did not come for the salmon, go back home and sleep. We'll see you next week. I'm not going to mention your names. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, Ola Biwoninu. Yes, Flaky. Flaky. God bless you. God bless you from UK. God bless you. Oh, watching from Saudi Arabia. God is awesome. God bless you. Hey, let me just say, viewers all over the world, I love you. Thank you. I really have to go now. Alaja Belo Shokwet here. I mean, on Shokwet, I love you so, so much. I love you. Eshe Goni, Tabaduro, Ani, Loleni, Munifei, every other one, we can, we can send that to the inbox. We should pray for all of you in us the coronavirus is not your portion in jesus name Amen. ten thousand by your right by your left nothing shall by any means hurt you we have people from Amen. Benin republic wow yes. god bless you i love you thank you for coming online thank you rosemary james and god bless you jan clean um some names i will not be able to mention well i hope you forgive me in advance we will mention names next week i love you all thank you See you next time, Friday. I'll be here. Vatican City. I want more Pope. I'll be here.